In this video, I'll be creating this procedural sky texture in Blender using the World Node Editor. Cycles comes with a realistic sky generator by default, however this is not compatible with Eevee. Plus this technique can be more customizable. Here you can see some previous renders I made using this technique. We'll be starting off by creating a gradient map from top to bottom, which we can then pass through to a color ramp to generate the surface color. Next we can add another gradient to this to make a sunset effect as well as some stars and a sun. We can also export this at any point to use as a HDRI map for use in other 3D applications or a game engine. But first off we need to configure the user interface to make it easier to work with. So I'm going to switch to the shading tab and change from object to world mode. For this I prefer to lower my viewport focal length from 50 to something like 25 because this increases our field of vision and we'll be able to see more. Also notice that I've added this sphere with a glossy material uh, to help me visualize the reflections of the background. I would also strongly recommend using a Node Wrangler add-on because that's got some useful shortcuts to speed up the workflow. Mainly if you hold Control Shift and left click you can preview a node without having to plug it into the world output each time. Our first step is going to be to create a generated texture coordinate and mapping node which will serve as the root orientation for the graph and we can rotate this later on a z-axis to spin it from side to side. So now we're going to create a top half and a lower half gradient which we will join together. So first off I'm going to create another mapping node, plug the root orientation in and then pass this onto a gradient texture. Which Remember I can preview by holding Control shift and left click using a node wrangler add-on. Linear mode will be more focused towards the horizon, whereas quadratic will be more distributed. I'm going to stick with linear because that's where I want the most amount of detail. And now we can rotate this on a y-axis by 90 degrees to get our top half of the gradient. We can duplicate this entire setup now and pass the root orientation into the mapping node, but rotate this one by negative 90 degrees on the y-axis to get our lower half. Now that we have these upper and lower gradients we just need to combine them. So I'm going to add a mass node with the operation type to add and I'll pass these two values in. But we need to use this type of node called a map range on both of these to invert the top one and half the intensity on both so that they don't clip. So I'm going to make the two minimum 0 0.5 and the two max 0 which will invert it and I'm going to set the two max on this one the lower gradient to be 0 0.5. This is pretty much doing the same job that a color ramp would do but I prefer to use the map range node because it shows all of the values on screen at once. It's a pretty useful node, so I'll have a link in the video description to the Blender documentation which describes how the node is used. Now this is where we can begin working on our sky. By passing this grayscale into a color ramp, we can add color to different levels. For a daytime setting, the horizon will usually be more white and desaturated, so we can have different levels of blue that taper off to white as it reaches the horizon. But remember, the horizon line is exactly at a position of uh, 0 0.5 on this gradient map here. So I'll now go in and add my different tones of blue. Notice how I switch from linear to b-spline as we get a smoother interpolation mode. You might also see that I make the lower half of this brown, and that's because it gives nicer reflections to down-facing surfaces if you aren't using pre-baked lighting in Eevee. Remember, you can always use the color picker tool to select any other parts of the gradient as well or a reference image of the sky in the image editor because that will be a lot more accurate than just going by eye. Now this might work really well for a daytime setting but I want to make a sunset so I'm gonna press copy and paste uh, because here's one I made earlier. So I'll reposition this. Next up is to add some atmospheric haze to our sunset. So I'm going to create another mapping node here and pass this into gradient texture. 
and I'll use the same input from the root origin of the graph. I'll set this to quadratic and preview this node now. The next step is to pass this into a map range node and then to another color ramp. We can change the color at the other end of this to something a bit more saturated, uh, maybe an orange, and I think I'm going to add a pink one in the middle by altering the hue. Something like that. We can now change the minimum value to decrease the size of this effect. Now that we've got our sunset effect, uh, we just need to combine these two using a mix RGB node, which can be found under the color. So I'll plug this one in as a top input and this one as my bottom. Now we can use a factor from the map range to combine them using the mix operation. And we can adjust the Z axis rotation to scroll from side to side, but I'll leave that at zero, and the Y for a vertical movement. And remember that you can always tweak this uh, minimum value as well to change the size of it. I want to keep mine around about there, maybe. This next one is optional, but I'd like to add some very faint stars. I already made a separate guide on how to do this, so I won't go into too much detail. And I'll leave a, a link in the video description if you'd like to check that out. So I'll just create a simplified version of it here. I'm going to pass the root orientation into a Voronoi texture and I'll move it a bit further down on the graph so we've got some more room. And I'll press Control shift to preview this node. Now I can change the scale till I'm happy with the number of stars and their position in the sky. Next up we can add a color ramp and swap the white and black positions around. If we move the black one further to the left, it will decrease the size of them. I'll leave mine a bit larger than I would typically do, so that viewers watching at a lower resolution can still see them. Now we just need to combine this. So I'm going to add another color mix node, using our previous sky as the top one. And we can use this color ramp as the factor as well. You'll notice our current blend mode is set to mix, which means that when we zoom in, we'll have some black rings around the outside of the stars. So I'm going to change this to screen, which will only brighten the image. And here we are. I might increase the size of them as well, though, to make them a bit more visible. Now, currently, our stars are actually penetrating through this atmospheric haze which looks a bit unrealistic because the sun is much brighter than the stars and would likely overexpose them. So what I'm going to do is switch around these two nodes so that the stars are being added first and then the sunset effect. You can also see me clean up the nodes there a tiny bit as well because I like to go from top to bottom following the order of what I'm adding. And you can see we're no longer having this problem. This next addition is also down to personal preference but I like to add a sun to the world which means that we don't need to use a sun lamp. We will control the level of sunlight using the strength intensity over here. So once again, I'm going to add another mapping node with a gradient. However, I can probably just duplicate this one right here and plug my origin orientation into it. But I'm going to pass this one into a map range node, and this time I'm going to set my two minimum to something very low, like negative 500. And even this might be a bit too big for the sun, but we can change this later. I'm going to create another mix RGB. This will probably be the last one. With the blend mode set to add, and we can pass this input in as the factor. And now let's preview this node to see the result. And we can see our sun has appeared. However, our entire sky has a uniform strength of one, which is a bit unrealistic. So I'm going to pass this into another map range node. Right here. Set the two minimum uh, back to zero again, and set the two max to something like 10, which is the emissive intensity I'd usually use for a sun in EV. 
It's probably best if we have a uniform intensity of 1 across everywhere in the sky, and then 10 for the sun though. So I'm actually going to make this minimum 1, and I'll pass this into the strength intensity of the background node, and would be this. So there we are. But I think a value of something like uh, 100 might work a bit better than 10. We, we can try some different ones. And if you're in EV, I recommend uh, going here and adding some bloom. Or maybe some fog glow uh, using a compositor if you're working in cycles. So there we are finished. The only thing left to do now is drop this into a scene and tweak the parameters of the mapping nodes to suit your artistic vision. By changing the color ramp values, we can create many more effects than just this sunset. Here are some of my previous experiments on screen right now, which only took a couple minutes each to set up. Now I hope this guide was useful to you, and thanks for watching.